Hello guys, Danny here at Parte. So welcome to Things to Know Thursday. This time we're doing Things to Know Thursday outdoor projection. So what's the deal with outdoor projection? Well, here's the deal. Now, I just uploaded the other day um, a video of me doing uh, a demo right out here. I had a 100 inch screen. Uh, with the projector at the bottom of the stairs, sit just a little over 11 feet away. Um, I could have moved the screen back a little bit. I actually should have because I could have gotten, I, I tested it up to about 14 feet and it still looked great at 14 feet. But just to show, I'm going to step down here, that there's nothing that was obstructing that screen. There's nothing. Okay? Nothing. And you guys can see it's an exceptionally bright day today. Nothing obstructing the screen, nothing obstructing that area there now. There's no overhang, there's no ceiling, there's no roof, there's no nothing. Um, now that video was taken at approximately about 11 o'clock, <clears throat> excuse me, 7 o'clock. <laughs> uh, really it was about 7.04 was when I looked at the, the my watch um, because I was filming with my cell phone. So it was about 7.04 in the evening. And uh, I'd taken a video right before that at about 6 o'clock, somewhere between 6 and 6.10, if I remember correctly. Um, and that video I'm holding on to. I'm going to release it at a, at, a, at a good time, whenever I feel like it's a good enough time to do so. Uh, but I think you'll be surprised because it was much brighter. There was a lot of sun shining. You could see it on either side. And <clears throat> the, the imagery was still exceptionally beautiful. And I did some contrast imagery, I did some bright imagery, so there was a little bit of all of it there. Uh, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised whenever I show that. But here's the deal. So if you take certain factors into consideration, let me first of all say that it's not about the time of day. Okay, the only correlation about time of day that can be made to outdoor projection, okay, the only correlation is that when you hear people say 8 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock at night, those kind of things are more environmental, okay? Because in the early hours of the morning, the sun is low on the horizon, okay? Low on the horizon. You don't have a lot of ambient light that's just flooding everything, more your your light is more directional at that point same thing with the evening hours you know just the opposite direction right towards the west you're going to have this low on the horizon more direct light and less full-on ambient light that you have out here right now uh, so it's really less about time and more about the environmental conditions and i would say to prove that what if i lived in barrow alaska where it could be dark at 12 o'clock at night or 12 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> so, you know, based on environmental conditions, seasons, okay, so season's a big one because in the summertime, it stays light here till almost 930 at night. Um, so it's based on season, it's based on geography, it's based on a number of different things, right, as far as the correlation. But here's the real calculation. So what you do is you can understand the lux, that's hitting the screen. So you measure the lux that's hitting the screen. Then you can calculate based on the projector that you have and the amount of lumens. So if you have your beam angle, which for most of these projectors like this, you're probably looking, I don't know, anywhere from a 26 to 30, 35 um, degree beam angle on, on a standard long throw projector. Um, so when you take your beam angle into a, into the calculation along with your distance from the screen along with the amount of lumens that you're effectively hitting the screen with not your peak lumens but the actual lumens that you're hitting the screen with at the time and that takes you would have to calculate that by measuring the 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 lux or the lumen output excuse me from your projector all right so the amount of lux that it's putting on the surface um, just the projector not any additional ambient light or anything like that. But if you have those factors, you can actually calculate the amount of lux that the projector's putting on, on the um, screen. Um, you can also then 
uh, factor a degree, and I'm not going to specify what that ratio is, but you can factor in a degree of ambient lux that the screen can take before it starts to be diminished. So can you project outside? Absolutely. At certain times under certain environmental conditions. Okay, there's a video that is <laughs> out on YouTube where they're using a retroreflective screen. Now, for those of you guys who may not know what that is, uh, one of the most typical is you've got glass beads that are uh, generally aluminized or, or uh, silverized on one side of the sphere. Very small. Uh, it's used in roads. So at nighttime, when you see the road lines that, that light up, or one of the most common is as you're coming up on a stop sign at night, you'll notice that the stop sign is really brilliant, and bright and red and reflective, right? Um, and then as soon as you get to the point to where your headlight isn't hitting the stop sign anymore, it goes black, goes dark. So that's kind of the way a retroreflective screen works. And well, I say kind of, that's essentially the way that they work, but it would be very directional. Once you get off axis from it just a little bit, um, you're not going to see anything. Those kind of screens, there's a video out there that where they're using a specialized optical screen like that, Right with an 8500 lumen projector and it's getting a decent image but it's in the afternoon and it's also overcast so when you look at these videos and i'm actually kind of surprised because a number of the videos that he shows the lux can't be that high for one and his screen still is not really performing and when i say he i'm talking about kenneth bird guys his screens still do not give out a very nice image in that alleyway. They just don't. Um, you know, there's nothing that I've seen that impresses me whatsoever. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with two factors. And I'm going to show you one of them in just a second on the TV in here. And I'll let you guys make the determination. What I'm giving you right now is fact. Okay? So the science of outdoor projection is, in this kind of environment, you ain't get squat. Not unless you have specialized equipment, specialized projector, you know, very high. I mean, you got a light cannon. Um, you know, you might be able to pick something up out here with a special screen, but you're not going to just go out here with his mix and a 4,000 or 5,000 lumen projector and pick up an image unless you set the projector about two feet away. Okay, that's just the way that this works. And you notice that he always does his projections from about... Well, the last one I saw on the the uh, rear projection, it looked like it was about six, at most, seven feet away from that. And that's on a, a piece of acrylic, guys. So, and you, you should be able to pick up a better image off acrylic than you would front-facing. Rear-facing is always easier to pick up a nice image on uh, from the front, you know, when you're rear projecting than it is from, you know, front projection, just because of surface lux. Uh you know, it's just, it's really sad that you have folks out there like him that are pushing out this idea uh, that you can do this kind of things without giving you the caveats. And, and I would say he knows the caveats because he's done so many of these different little outdoor, it seems to be his go-to. Let me go to an outdoor projection. And he hasn't proved anything yet. I mean, you guys got to consider that. He hasn't proven anything yet. He's yet to put out one video that looked as nice as the video that I put out here, and I'll take that to the bank. So you need to be very careful about who you listen to out there because you do so at your own peril a lot of times. Keep in mind, YouTube is not monitoring these videos to see if he's lying. But that being the case, I'm bringing the case to them that in a class action situation, they could very well be held liable, too, because they've allowed this to continue on. Uh, after Crow had brought it to their attention and after I brought something to their attention on another individual. And it's not like, guys, I'm trying to run off the competition. I could care less about that. I mean, you know, there's enough business out there for everybody. That's not what this is about. This is about somebody who is manipulating his story to fraud people out of their money with things that are very factually untrue. Very factually untrue. I've brought up num numerous things. For example, you know, his ex explanation that if you had light directly over the projector, you know, that's going to impact the... No, it does not. It does not. That is a scientific fact. 
it does not impact the projector light. Uh, only if it hits the surface. All the light battles that happen with projection happen at the screen surface, folks. That's, that's just the truth. It happens at the screen surface. The battle does. Okay, whether or not you got the right munitions, uh, that's a whole different matter. So you could have a 400 lumen projector. Well, that's going to mean you even got a harder battle at the screen surface, but it still happens at the screen surface. Okay, so I'm going to pause and I'm going to show you something else. All right, guys, so I want you to see this is an unmanipulated image from his video. When have you ever been out in the morning or in the afternoon? And it be so bright that you can't. And guys, I'm telling you, I'm having to stand back a little bit because if I get up on this, it's not just the brightness for my TV. I mean, it's a full wash, right? This light bleeds into this light, bleeds into all around. That is not natural. That is not natural. This is the result of pushing the brightness so high on the camera to make you believe Okay, to make you folks believe that this is an extremely bright environment. What I find odd about it is there's no shadows anywhere. And that's something, that's a dead giveaway. See, if it was that bright, I should be seeing shadows somewhere in the video. I'm not really picking up any shadows anywhere. And this is just a snapshot, but I'm saying in the video itself. There's none. So that in itself is a dead giveaway. So that's one. Hold on just a sec. Okay, there's the other. Once again, you see, all of this just bleeds. It's one color. There's no distinction, which means that the brightness settings are severely jacked up. And here's the primary thing I want you to take note of. The only part of the screen, okay, that you make out a real image is the part that's right in front of where the projector light is. This over here, gone. Gone. I've never made anything that looks this horrid. That's the only side, and it's because he's standing on this side, and the projector's right behind it. If you were standing over here, nothing. Nothing. So, can you project outside? Sure, under certain environmental conditions, but all those conditions have to be met for you to pick up any kind of imagery, especially any imagery that you really want to watch. So, once again, guys, be aware and be wary of Kenneth Burt. All right? You guys have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye.